Hey dolls, welcome back to my channel, Sharon's Nail Boutique. So I actually lost tons of my footage from this nail set. So basically, I'm, I wanted to still share this with you because I have not dedicated a video to just my nail prep. So this is what I'm going to share with you guys with this video since I lost the actual set footage. I have everything up until the thin clear base. So I'm going to go in, disinfect my client's hands. I disinfect my hands. We also wash before disinfection. I also disinfect all my tools in between each client and prior to service, just in case. You know, you can never be too clean. So once we've done that, I will go in with my cuticle pusher, push all the cuticles back as I am doing here. This is all in real time. So it's very gentle. It's never supposed to hurt. If your client is in pain, you are doing something wrong. So this should never be a painful process. It should be nothing but comfortable and cozy for your client. Um, and always let them know to make you aware if they are in any kind of discomfort, any kind of pain, any kind of warmth or heat, anything like that. You want them to let you know because we can't always tell if they're feeling it. Um being that we work so quickly. Um, so I just go in and finish pushing the cuticles back, making sure I'm scraping that skin along with it. And um, if you use the other side of your cuticle pusher, you can scrape most of that off and then you can finish with your cuticle bit. I usually just go in, push it back, um, sometimes I use the scraper side, but for the most part, I just push them back and then go in with my cuticle bit itself and remove the rest of that dead skin. And then I go in with my hand file to remove the shine. So, <clears throat> excuse me, that's all you see me doing here is just finishing, pushing the cuticles back and making my way to the next step. So, yeah, like I was saying, I've never actually done like a prep video for you guys. So this is why I wanted to at least save this footage and share with you my full prep routine. So you know how I prep the nails before you see all those beautiful designs, you know, because if you don't get this step accurate, this is a lot of what causes lifting problems. This is 85 to 90% of your lifting problems with the prep right here. If you do not do this step properly, then you're going to get lifting, you're going to get uh, fungus, you're going to get all of those things. Now, it is possible for your client to get lifting even though you did everything right. I mean, everybody's nails are different. As long as you're doing your prep, your nails should last more than two weeks. Uh, a lot of my clients, their nails last them um, three to four and sometimes five, six weeks. Um, I guarantee my nails for two weeks. Usually I don't go any longer than that because I can't tell somebody, oh, you're not going to get lifting after two weeks. You're not going to have any fungus because if you're using a lot of water or washing your hands a lot or your job consists of using water, then yeah, you're going to eventually start to get lifting because acrylic is a porous material meaning over time it will seep into the acrylic and cause moisture to be absorbed and start lifting from the nail plate itself. So as long as you're getting your prep down and doing it accurately, that should prevent a lot of those lifting issues. Now, as you can see, I'm going in with my cuticle bit here. This is not a typical cuticle bit. It actually came in that kit, that 30-piece kit. And I love this bit because I actually like it a lot better than a lot of the common cuticle bits because it not only gets the cuticle back end, but it gets some of um, the skin that's a little bit before the cuticle as well. Um, so it really, really does the trick. I love this cuticle bit. I would highly, highly recommend getting yourself one of those 30 piece kits. A lot of times they send them with the the drills or the the um the lamps or the drills, the kits that you get off of AliExpress or eBay. A lot of times they'll send these 30 piece kits and there's a lot of bits in there that are really 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 um useful and come in handy. So you definitely want to get yourself one of those. So now I am just going in and removing the shine from her nail plate and you don't have to be rough. You're literally just scratching the surface of the nail. 
You never want to go in on this part with the machine. I say this in every single video, never use your mandrel bit with the sanding band across the nail plate. Yes, Young Nails does it. A lot of nail techs on here do it. They're not supposed to be doing it. That's something we learn in nail school. You should never take the machine to the nail plate because even though you may think it's on a, the lowest speed, and yeah, it probably is, that's still enough speed to cause damage to the nail plate. You don't need to use that. Yeah, it's quicker, and if you're rushing, okay, it saves you, what, five, ten minutes? Honestly, I'm sure your client would rather have thick, healthy nails than thinned out, paper-thin nails because then they're more susceptible to the ridges, the indentations, all of those things that come with having thin nails, okay? It'll be easier for their nail to just rip right off the nail bed when a nail pops off because it's so thin and fragile that it, you know, there it has no chance to recover, so never, 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 never use your mandrel bit with your machine on the, the natural nail plate. If you want to use it on the acrylic itself, that's fine. You can also use it to blend in the tip, but don't go on the natural nail itself. So now I'm just going in with these tips. I get these from my nail supply and um, I just make sure that um, the tips fit from side wall to side wall. Um, you never want to have a tip that's too small because then you're not getting the structure of the nail proper. You want to make sure. And if you have to file some aside of it a little bit, that's fine too. You could do that. Um, but you want you don't want to have a tip that's too small. Definitely not. So I'm just making sure that this fits properly. And I go in with my glue. If I have to, I do put a little bit while it's on. Um, just to kind of seal in those um, corners or uh, kind of the wings of the tip there that go up to the sides. Um, that tip is good. It's all glued down. So I move on to my next nail and making sure that they fit side wall to side wall. Perfect. Um, so that's all I'm doing here. And this could be a pain in the ass because not everybody's nails are shaped the same way. Some people have square nails. Some people have naturally rounded nails. Um, some people's nails have a nice C curve. Some people's nails are flat across. Um, so it can be difficult sometimes. Um, but the key is to just keep on trucking and find ways that'll help you um, get these things done correctly and efficiently. So I'm just finishing up this last hand and gluing on the ring finger and pinky. Um, remember, a little glue goes a long way. You don't need a shitload of glue because you don't. It's happened to me before where I, I didn't notice it came out really fast and it dripped all the way down my finger and got stuck to the tip. So, yeah, that's that's a nasty mess there when you get glue all over yourself. It's so annoying. Um, but I pretty much have gotten the tip sizing down to a science. Like, I could pretty much look at my client's nails and see what size they need. Um, over time, you get the hang of it. But and I always like to put them on in, like, a downward angle so I can get it straight, as straight as possible, and all the air bubbles out and the corners sealed so there we have it. I'm just um, cutting the sides now because we are doing the coffin shape. So I love these little scissors for that. I got these from Joann's and they're perfect little cutting scissors. Um, I actually have the stork ones as well, which are really, really good too. Um, but make no mistake, if you get the stork scissors from Walmart, they will not work as good. Those ones are the cheaper version of the stork scissors. You got to get your stork scissors from Michael's or... Uh, Joanne fabrics because those are the best ones. So literally I just shape I cut these down to size and I cut the little corners off and that almost gives you the perfect coffin every single time. Um, some some people like there's a little wider some people's like there's a little thinner like the ballerina. I personally like a little bit wider set of a coffin. I'm not 
really into like the thin ballerina shaped coffin. Um, it looks pretty on some people, but I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I like the wider set coffin. So now I'm just, I just blended those tips. So that's all I did there. Now I'm getting ready to go in with my thin clear layer. So I want you guys to pay attention to this because it doesn't have to be hard. Um, this can be very, very easy. So I just wanted to zoom in because I want to show you guys. I do go in with my OPI Bond Aid first, and then I go in with my No Lift Nails Acid Base Primer. The OPI Bond Aid, I go in with two coats, and I must have already did it because I skipped ahead. So now I'm just going in with my two coats of Acid Base Primer. So I do my first coat, and then I do the second coat right before acrylic application. So with acrylic, I mean with an Acid Base Primer, you want to wait till it's mostly dry to go in and place your bead. With Acid Liss, which is Acid Free Bonder or Primer, you go in while it's still damp. So if you have the Mia Secret Acid Liss Primer, you go in while it's still damp somewhat. I do about three, two to three nails at a time because by the time I get to those, they will have dried for the most part. Okay, so I place my bead up at the cuticle. I pat it out, pull down my sides. With the pinky, it's easy because it's not that big of a nail. You don't have to do too much padding out. You know what I mean? I always like to make sure my side walls are nice and tidy and clean. Now, you see how you don't have to go all around the finger with your monomer to clean up those side walls and cuticle area? That's not necessary. It does not have to be done that way. And you shouldn't be doing it that way. That's a a ugly ugly thing to be doing to your client um if your client knew anything about nails which they a lot of times people don't they they go to get their nails done because they don't want to do their own nails they they're trusting you to take care of their nails properly and when you're getting monomer all over their skin they don't know that over time they're going to become allergic to it they just think that you know what you're doing and that's something that you should not be subjecting your client to I mean, that's a horrible, horrible thing to be doing to a person, getting this kind of um, chemical all over their skin like that. I mean, honestly, I, I'm sure you guys could tell it upsets me to no end because I talk about it all the time. And it really bothers me because these people are teaching other people these bad habits. And I cannot stress enough that that should never be happening. You should never be getting monomer on the skin and if you are you should be wiping it off quickly because over time they will become allergic to it it's called contact dermatitis now honestly I don't know if I should say names you know I feel like I should because you know I've made comments to these people on their channels about doing that and they don't listen. It's like they don't care. They think they know everything and they're not going to listen to anybody. But you know what? Nail techs, just because you're a seasoned nail tech does not mean you know everything because these, you know, rules to the game are constantly changing. Designs are always changing. Um, different uh, application methods are always changing. Nails is a, a thing that's always, always changing for the better. We learn new things all the time. However, we always knew that we shouldn't be getting monomer on the skin. That's not something that, oh, now we know that it causes this and that. No, we know it's a chemical. We know it's not safe on the skin. This is why we don't get acrylic on the skin. This is why we don't get liquid on the skin because we're taught that it can cause contact dermatitis. And that's like with anything, overexposure to the skin with any sort of chemical can do that. And that's one of the first things that we learn in nail school. So I'm really, really surprised that these ladies are doing this and teaching this method. This is my number 14 oval aquarium brush that I got off AliExpress. I'm using my Mia Secret Liquid and my Mia Secret Clear. And I'm just going in with my thin clear base. I always do this um, with my clients because I like to have something to file back down to. I also do it just in case um, staining. And it, it's good to have this because when you file back down to do your redesign, you don't want to file back down to the natural nail because that's going to cause burning sensation. So if you have 
like a buffer layer, so to speak, which is your thin, clear layer, then you have something there to file down to and you're not going to just have bare nail. You know what I mean? So as you can see, it's not hard. It's very easy to lay your thin, clear base. Once you get the hang of it, it's quick, you know? Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for watching again, dolls. And I will see you in my next one. Bye now.